Now, you know this woman, don't you? Yes, we work together. Yeah, and, and I think I know her, but I don't think I ever met her. But we'll find out. Uh, I guess you almost have to meet somebody you, to know them, don't I you? I would say, yeah, but we'll yeah. find out. I have a feeling we'll, we'll clear out. that up. Uh, aside from being a talented actress who has appeared in such films as Nashville, The Shining, Annie Hall, and Popeye, my next guest is also, this is very impressive, the executive producer and creator of a fine television series series on Showtime called Fairy Tale Theater. Please welcome Shelley Duvall. Nice to see you. How are you? Every, everything I've seen you in, every film, I've always enjoyed your work. I think you bring a really nice, uh, I don't know the term, but you always add a really interesting dimension to the part. Oh, well, thanks. Well, no, you, I think you deserve that. But uh, now, have we ever met? Well, I thought we met with Lorne Michaels one time. Well, I've never Saturday met him, night. so it's unlikely that... Uh, well, that's true. Well, okay. we, weren't, we weren't on another show together? I don't know. I don't think so. Hmm. Do you know of one? Not offhand. Not, I was thinking that maybe that's where we met, but I guess we don't know one another. Yeah. So I guess, well, hi, David. Nice to meet you. Thanks nice for being here. Uh, boy, your hands are freezing. Yeah, I just had a Coca-Cola. And they do that to your hands? <laughs> They ought to take that stuff <laughs> off the market. You know what I'm... No, 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 no. Just, that's just a joke. <laughs> they, ought to, they ought to put more of it on the market. We need more. We need more Coca-Cola on the market, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, now, is, you, you never took acting lessons, never studied acting. You just one day started acting, right? Well, it was a fluke. Mm -hmm. I gave a party at my house in Houston, Texas, and three men walked in that I didn't know. Yeah, Houston. <laughs> and, uh, now, how is it that you're having a party and three guys show up you don't know? Well, someone else at the party called up the movie people and said, where, if you where, want where, some fun in Houston, come to this address. What were the movie people doing in Houston? Uh, Robert Altman was about to shoot Brewster McCloud, mm. which wound up being my first movie mm -hmm. and first acting job ever. I was going to be a scientist, a la Miss Einstein. Really? How far along had you gotten in your studies? You were in college at this point, in high school? Two years in junior college. Junior college. Yeah, I couldn't go right straight to college. Uh -huh. My last year I discovered, you know, fun uh -huh. in the 12th grade. So. And, and what kind of scientist did you have uh, visions of being, being? Well, research of some sort. I knew it couldn't be with animals because I couldn't stand vivisection, and I knew it couldn't be with what is anything that could by talk the way? back. Vivisection is actually like dissecting things on... Yes, yeah. and I hate okay. it. So I decided against that right away and went on to microbes. Mm -hmm. What are, what are microbes? What do you do with those? Little tiny things that you can only see through a microscope, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't scream or anything. Yeah. Uh, and you were going to be in the area of uh, medical research, probably? Oh, no, never medical, no. Not medical. Maybe food, nutrition and diet therapy, uh -huh. how we work. Yeah. Uh, and uh, do you still do any of this? Do you, do you know anything about this now? Have you forgotten it all? No, I subscribe to just about every scientific publication there is. When I have time to read it, I read it. Name, name a scientific publication. Scientific American. Name another one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Science Digest. Yeah. All right. Now, what, what was the last thing that caused you, as you're leafing <laughs> through this, to say, gee, that's pretty impressive? Well, I guess recombinant DNA. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> now, that's success. That really got my attention. Uh, is there any way you can explain that so I'll understand it briefly? Well, recombinant DNA uh, enables you to clone things, and I think it's probably the most exciting discovery of our times. Yeah. Because it, it makes cloning possible. You could possibly take, say, one uh, cell of a heart and maybe make a new heart for somebody instead of having to borrow one from someone who's just died. Yeah. And, and are they, how far along has this come practically? Uh, I think it's helped uh, diabetics. Uh, with making insulin. Yeah, but we, we are, we're, not, uh, we're not actually cloning things now, like a, a, a guy's not making his own rabbits or something like that. <laughs> Maybe in some backyard somewhere. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, a little backyard science uh, with recombinant DNA. Well, that's how computers started, you know, in a garage, so why not a backyard? Really? They started in a garage? I think so. At least I read that in Newsweek or something <laughs> yeah. a couple of years back. Yeah. See so somebody just fooling around in his garage? Tuning yeah. up the mower one afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, well, that's very impressive. And uh, there's probably no chance at this point in your life that you'll ever uh, assume a more active role in that area, is there? Oh, I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe I can play Madame Curie or something eventually. All right. Okay. We have to do a, uh, a commercial, and it'd probably be for Coca-Cola, a fine product. 
So uh, we'll be back with Shelley Duvall. All right. Uh, okay, so you're, you're in Houston. You're having a party. Uh, and three movie guys showed up from Brewster McLeod. And so uh, we got sidetracked. How then did you get into films from that point? Well, my boyfriend was an artist. Mm -hmm. and uh, Is he still an artist? Yes, he's still an artist, but we're not boyfriend and girlfriend mm -hmm. anymore. What is he? Is he uh, married now? Uh, no. What's his name? Oh, golly. Bernard Sampson. Yeah. Do you still stay in touch with him? Uh, occasionally. Yeah, well, that's nice. I think that's important. Don't yeah, you? I think so, too. We never had an argument. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay, so uh, he invites, or these are friends of Bernard's. Well, not exactly. Okay. So anyway, some people came and they showed up and I was showing Bernard's paintings and I was saying, you know, what the artist was thinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the three men said, uh, we have some patrons of the arts for friends. How would you like to bring the paintings up, say, Wednesday at 1 o'clock to the offices? And I said, sure. And I did. Wednesday at 1 o'clock, 35 <coughs> paintings, I'm there. And sure enough, there's some patronly looking gentlemen sitting around. Mm -hmm one of whom was Robert Altman, and instead of buying any of the paintings after I showed them to them, they said, how would you like to be in a movie? Quote, unquote. And I said, uh oh, poor no, no thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm backing up, and they know, oh, wait a minute, it's MGM, it's Robert Altman. Have you seen MASH? And no, and here's 10 free tickets. And <laughs> I went, I came, I saw, and I yeah. enjoyed so they it, you, and they, uh, I that's, said, okay. That is, that's an amazing story. That's one of those, typical, or not typical, but it's one of those great Hollywood stories, although it happened in Houston. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the hell's the matter. Uh, well, that's uh, that, that was a, a strange movie, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Now you were, uh, if I remember correctly, were you the the girlfriend who would come over while he was working out, getting ready to fly, Brewster? Was that was that you? Uh, no, I'm the one with the Venus flytrap eyelashes. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, so your, your boyfriend didn't sell any paintings. Was he steamed about that? No, because we later sold them all, so... Oh, great. Well, that's good. Everything turned out right in the end. Yeah. You know? uh, I mentioned earlier that I think this is very impressive, that you not only are the producer and executive producer of this series, but you created Fairy Tale Theater. How did, you, how did that happen? <laughs> well, it was longer than eight days. Seven days. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's right. But uh, <laughs> I uh, just had the idea. I was reading fairy tales. I'd collected antique illustrated books for quite some time. And I was reading The Frog Prince one day uh, after I'd just done Popeye with Robin Williams. And I thought, gosh, wouldn't Robin make a great frog? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I called him up and I said, how would you like to play a frog <laughs> in The Frog Prince? And my friend Eric Idle had said, okay, I'll write and direct it. And they loved each other and they said yes. And thus, the first fairy tale was born. How many years has that been in production now? Uh, two, a little over two years. Yeah. Well, We've that, done 23 shows. That's terrific. And uh, the, the secret, uh, in addition to the writing and so forth, is the, the really interesting casting, isn't it? Well, yes. Yeah. The writing, but yeah. the writing is, uh, it's difficult to develop a fairy tale from just a quarter of a page, which is what most fairy tales are in the books. Really? A quarter of a page to five pages long, so yeah. the writers have to really be inventive. Um, uh, we have some, uh, uh, a few minutes from one of them, and I'm not sure which one this is. Do you know, Shelley? Ah, uh, it's from The Frog Prince, the, the one, one I was just okay, speaking terrific. about this, with Robin Williams, so Terry be, Gar. All right, this will be you and Robin and Terry Gar. And not me. You're not in this one. Oh, no. Okay, uh, The Frog Prince with uh, Terry Gar and Robin Williams from Fairy Tale Theater. You cruel, heartless little princess. Oh, that's not true. I'm going to teach you a lesson you won't forget. Guards, turn your backs. I'm going to thrash some respect into you, you vain, selfish, spoiled, frog-murdering little princess. No! no! Who said that? Who said that? I did. Well, you're not going to believe Oh, no, 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 it's bad, not as bad as it looks. You're never going to believe this, Father. Who is that? He is the frog. Yeah, pull the other one. How long has this been going on? But you don't understand. What's your name? Uh, Prince Robin. Uh -huh. Yeah, Prince Robin. There is no such prince. Do you know what the penalty is for being caught in a princess's bed? Oh, no, 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 please. I, I, I know this doesn't look very good. But, yeah, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't do anything. Guards! Throw him into the deepest dungeon no, you can no, find. No, no, please, no, no, please. No, 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 you can't. Well, I, I'm naked. <laughs> Very nice. Quite an embarrassing situation. 
So uh, this continues, and uh, I hope it is uh, as big a success in the future as it has been so far. It's oh, fascinating stuff. Yeah, we got them all over the world now. Yeah. On uh, CBS Fox home videotapes, and they're on Showtime cable TV. So anybody anywhere can see them anytime. Absolutely. Well, that's what entertainment is all about. Uh, <laughs> Shelley, it was nice to meet you finally. Nice to Thank meet you. Thank you very much for being here. We have to go away for station identification, but we'll be right back, folks.